Hello everyone, my name is Kara Brown. I am an urban fantasy author and a writer for Other World Inc. and Three Fates Press. I also write under the pen name of Faye Black for Violet Gaze, and I am very happy to have you here today. If you are a reoccurring viewer, thank you so much for coming. I always appreciate your support. If you are new, it's great to have you. I hope that you enjoy this conversation that we are about to have today. If you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button, uh, I'm trying to fight an algorithm here on YouTube right now, and any help I can get on this matter would be really appreciated. So thank you in advance for that. Now, if you saw the title, you definitely want to know why I want to talk about book reviews. Uh, this has actually been a topic that I have wanted to discuss for uh, a good while now, but, you know, due to the fact that, you know, I am an author, I have been kind of tricky about, you know, do I talk about this? How do I talk about this? You know, how do I discuss this in a way that doesn't make a mob of people come after me for having an opinion? So I'm going to do the very best that I can. Uh, yesterday, when I recorded this video, I was, uh, it, was a, it was a dumpster fire. It was really bad. And, uh, you know, I decided that I actually need to do this in a little bit more of a structured way which is why we're seeing the slideshows and we are going to go ahead and dive right into this now the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to cover some basics we're going to cover the stuff that is typically brought up and make sure that we don't have to repeat some of these facts if you feel the need to repeat these facts or clarify anything that i have mentioned up uh, please feel free to i will never tell anybody to not share an opinion or a thought with me that is your right that is your due diligence so to speak and speaking of due diligence uh, i will be transparent with you guys I am an author. I am a book lover. I am here to have a conversation. I am not here to stir the pot or piss people off. Uh, if you actually go and you check me out, you will notice that I have some mixed book reviews as my myself, and I don't want you guys to think that I am coming at this from the point of view of somebody who is salty. In fact, the whole reason that I made this book review isn't even about my book. It's something that I noticed a couple years ago and something that happened again this year, and this actually has to do with the background part of this, which is partly why I really want to talk about this. Uh, uh, because for those of you who aren't aware, book reviews do obviously affect sales for an author. They do affect their career and their ability to keep publishing. And also, it, there's a lot more of a ripple effect that comes in there. I mean, if you guys go check out the podcast that I did with Tamara Woods, which I will link down below, I have a part where I talk about book advances and I talk a little bit about reviews and I talk a lot more in depth about the situation that is involved with Blood Air. In fact, uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to leave uh, just a little snippet to kind of like give you guys an idea of the things that we discuss on there and we're going to go ahead and keep moving forward with this. Let's go ahead and dive straight into uh, the factors of book reviews. Now obviously book reviews comes in all different shapes, forms, and sizes and there's a lot of different reasons for that. Now uh, the first thing that comes into the fact is that we are all individuals. We all have different pasts, we all have different experiences, we all have different reading histories, we also all have the different expectations. And because of this, th with these things that separate all of us, we end up treating the star rating differently. Uh, I and one of the things I will appreciate for the folks that actually do treat the star rating differently is that in their reviews that they leave, they say, for me, a three star means this or a four star means this. So I always appreciate when I read book reviews, and again, these are for other books, not mine, where they actually kind of like explain that because that makes a lot more sense to me as somebody who's reading it. Now, the other thing that I have also noticed is that there are some individuals who kind of identify themselves as book bashers. They will come in and they will destroy a book because that's just something that they identify with. It's who they are. They are the book basher. They place a lot of their own self-identity and their uh, image on this concept, which for them may be good if their friends know them as the book basher, but of course for authors that doesn't really do us a lot of good, especially if they're bashing the book in a way because they have to bash the book somehow. Like they're, sh like they're stretching for reasons to bash the book. Then you also have the individuals who are very easy to please and hard to please. If you guys see any of my uh, drunk book review videos, I always preface it with, I am a very hard reader to please. I even put that in my book reviews, like I'm very hard to please. I read a lot, I write a lot, I do all those things. So unfortunately I can't turn certain parts of my brain off when it comes to reading books and so I typically overanalyze stuff so I always leave that preface that I'm a very hard reader to please. Uh, you will also find the individuals who have author loyalty. Uh, a good example would be myself and Grace Draven. She writes phenomenal books as far as I'm concerned and every time she comes out with a new book I don't even read the blurb I just buy it and then when I have a moment I'll sit down and read it and I always take the time to leave her a glowing review. Not because I like 
I like the author, but because the book is good, but again, I always expect these books to be good, and I've not been disappointed yet, and that is part of what author loyalty is, so moving on. There are plenty of examples that come before the one that I'm about to talk about, but this, I think this is a really good example of a historical book that has gone through this process that I'm about to kind of cover. So Zenith came out and it was written by two authors and two folks who were very big on YouTube. They had their own following. They were doing pretty well for themselves. They collaborated. They got a book that came out and uh, the, the community was not very happy about this book. I noticed that a whole bunch of reviews for this book were coming up on one of the things I usually do is I'll go check out like I'll go check out Amazon or I'll go check out Goodreads first. And the interesting thing that I noticed when I was looking at the reviews on these two sites is that they had a lot of common verbiage. Like they were all pointing out the exact same things, almost the exact same page numbers. I was a little perplexed by this and so I decided to start watching all the, the book review videos that were on YouTube. And I noticed that a lot of these people who were leaving these reviews were basing their words and their comments off of these things that the YouTubers were saying. Now, I'm not going to come here in here and say that this is the booktuber's fault for leaving their honest opinion on a book. That's not their fault at all. Nor are they responsible for the actions that people take after they see their video. What I will say though is that... The, this was definitely an issue. Um, there was a lot that was going on during this situation. We were looking at people getting hurt by the way that, you know, booktubers were being treated by publishers. We were looking at just like this very, it was a very disillusioned time for, I want to say, the community. And a lot of people were naturally upset. Now, I still bought the book and I still read the book because in some cases, some of these reviews, as far as I could tell from just the tone of the writing, were just not justified. Um, some of these felt like personal attacks on the authors, which I'm going to touch on a little bit later in this video. And other ones were just, it was just crazy. I am going to, one person who actually left a really fabulous review, in my opinion, on this book uh, is actually going to be Oshi Reads. Oshi Reads, when she did her review on this book, didn't actually talk about the authors or the writing. She talked about the publisher and she was so spot on because what the Zenith really was at the end of the day was a cash grab for the publisher. That's what it was. They took these two people with a lot of people in, you know, in their subscriber counts and published their book and made some bank off of it. And she did such a phenomenal job of pointing that out. And uh, I instantly fell in love with the channel after that. So, yeah. Now, at the time that I am recording this video in 2019, the more current example of this is actually going to be Blood Air. Blood Air is a YA book uh, that's not even out yet. <laughs> it's not even out. And the very short and sweet of this is going to be that one of the ARC reviewers took a passage out of context from the book, showed it online, got a whole bunch of people uh, together to talk about the injustice and how wrong it was and how this person was racist and a whole lot of other things. And so Twitter mob got riled up and they... they ganged up on this author and she ended up taking the book down from pre-order and later after reviewing it decided to put it back up so kudos if you happen to be seeing this for you to do that that's that's really amazing one thing that i do want to talk about is that this book already has 300 reviews it's not out yet okay just just think about that for a minute it's not out yet it's got 300 reviews uh i would like to see the verified people who actually read all this book that left those reviews because i am calling some serious bs if these 300 people have already read a book that's not out yet there's not that many arc reviews that get sent out i mean let's be real here I have a lot of thoughts when it comes to Twitter mob and what they want to do. Um, and again, I'm going to plug the podcast because I actually talked about it in there. If you want to hear more about Twitter mob and my thoughts on their righteous uh, purpose in life, I, I talk about it pretty much in depth in there. One thing I definitely do want to say is I don't I don't really think that these actions that are taken don't really help anybody. Um, I mean, I, again, I think sometimes the intention's in the right place, but the execution's definitely in the wrong place. And one thing that I should probably point out, because I don't want people to think that I'm on some kind of weird quest to shut down Twitter mob, because to be really frank with everybody who's listening to me right now, there's no way to shut this down. There, there is absolutely no way. The only thing that can really be done is just having open co conversations about this conduct, kind of spreading awareness, you know, just having discussions in general about this, so that way people can be, when they decide to make these choices, hopefully they'll make it from a logical place and not from a need jerk emotional response. That's that's kind of what I would like to happen in life, but again, we don't always get what we want, right? So I want to take a moment to talk about the places that I go to for my book reviews. And um, before y'all jump on me and you're like, Kara, there are way more books than that. I know. 
I, there are plenty of other places that you guys can go to for book reviews. They are all fantastic. They're all wonderful. Um, and these are only a few snippets that I know of. But for me, the places that I go to are going to be Amazon and Goodreads. Now, I check out Amazon because it has a verified purchase. I know whoever is leaving a review for that product has actually purchased the book and read it. Now, there's some conditions that apply to that, but it's not a big deal. The one issue with that, though, is not everybody shops on Amazon. Uh, not everybody gets their books from there. Some folks get their books from Barnes & Noble or another bookstore or a local mom and pa shop, or they get them from the places that I listed here under Goodreads. You know, their secondhand books, a friend gave it to them, they got them from the library, they got borrowed books. And that is, I think, a wonderful thing that I would love to do another video about, because I know that there was forever ago a video about materialism and, you know, booktube and how everybody has to have a million books. Um, and I know in one of my shots you guys see that I have a lot of books in my background. Those are like all the books I own. Like, that's it. I, I, I don't typically buy books. I will borrow them or I'll go to the library and all that other stuff. If I really like a book, I'm going to go buy it because I definitely want to support the author with my money. Now, the problem with Goodreads is that there is no verification reading, which kind of leads to the problem that I typically see where somebody will be influenced by another person and they will be inspired by that person and then they go and leave a whatever review for that book, but they haven't even they haven't even read it. Now, here's the discussion part of my video. These are things that I would like to talk about. Um, now, the first thing that I would like to talk about is that people who leave book reviews should probably read the damn book. I know that sounds really weird, but yeah, I think people who leave book reviews should actually read the book, be familiar with it. And one of the reasons I'm going to encourage people to actually start doing this more is because I can usually tell when I'm reading a comment from somebody if they are just copying the comment from somebody else or they're parroting because they won't. Every As I mentioned before, early in the video, everybody is an individual they're all going to have a different thought or opinion on something so when i see a whole bunch of identical thoughts and opinions that's a huge giveaway to me that these people haven't read the book and why they haven't read the book can be for multiple reasons it could be just because of the author's fan base it could be the fan base of somebody who already left a review um it could be just the cool thing to do like who knows right who knows so the first thing is like please read the book please read the book before you do your book review the other things that I do want to discuss in this are actually going to be some concerns I have when it comes to people or the types of book reviews, uh, concerns with these kind of reviews. Now, these are things that I see pretty often. It frightens me just a little bit. Um, there are occasionally personal attacks against the author and not the book, and these, these get ugly and they are very yikes. Uh, you know, they're kind of like, this author's a horrible human being, they should never have written this. It, you know, the, the book review is a review on the literature, it's not a review on the person. And uh, if you happen to be the kind of person that likes to go after the author too, I would kindly encourage you to not do that anymore, just because when those kind of reviews are left, it makes the reviewer seem a little illogical, it makes it seem like it's a, an emotional argument. And if you're gonna if you're gonna take down a book, take down the book. Don't don't take everybody down with you. Just saying. Uh, the other one, which I'm sure some of you giggled at, has to do with bashing kinks. I see this a lot in the romance community, where people don't like the kink that's associated with the book. And so, if you don't like it, just have the disclaimer saying, "I don't like this kink." Don't bash the entire book because you just don't like the nature of the relationship. The other thing, and this is actually a pet peeve of mine, is the modern applications of current social norms to historical works um so uh not that i'm a huge history buff or anything like that but i know enough about history to know that the way that things are now were definitely not how they were 100 years ago or 200 five however long things were different social economics were different the way that men and women were treated were different the relationships that men and women have were very different the events going on were different the priorities were different everything was different so when somebody comes in and they say i don't like the way that this man treated this woman in this historical book i I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's just the way that things were. Now, fad reviews. Fad reviews is pretty much, I want to say, the crux of this entire thing that I'm talking about right now, where basically a book comes out, it's popular to hate it or like it or whatever, and people are just leaving reviews for to back it or to take it down or to do whatever. And again, this mostly centers around the fact that people just aren't reading the books. You know, their bestie said something, they're coming at that book, and they're going to copy whatever it is that their friend said, and that's just... It's just, please stop doing that. Now, this last one is has to do with buyouts, and uh, this is such a tricky area for me to talk about. Give me a moment to think about it. So, what I mean by buyout is I can always tell 
because I do follow certain certain book reviewers because obviously I respect their opinion and they're very good at what they do. And I can always tell when a book reviewer is friends with the author or they are given some kind of incentive from the publisher to leave a review. They always say it's an honest review, but I'm like, you've already got a conflict of interest because you're reviewing your friend's book. Like, that's already on the thing. And I can, and even if they don't say in the video that they're friends with the person, there's this thing called social media. I do check it. I do see who follows who and I do see the interactions that happen. So if I see that people are talking to each other in a regular correspondence way, just saying that's a conflict of interest. And one example, I don't want to say her name because I don't need her fan base to come after me either. Um, but there was one book reviewer and she was definitely kind of on the scale of the book basher. Like she definitely like rips into these books like hardcore, like just tears their guts out and leaves the carcasses out in the sun to rot. And this one book came out and I thought she was going to tear out a new one. And all she did was give it glowing praise and say how amazing it was. And then the other thing was that the nitpicking that she did in it was just almost non non-existent and I was just like okay so how much did you get paid to leave that like it's hard um it's it's hard for me to take somebody seriously when I see that their integrity is in check like that um and I haven't actually watched any videos by that person since then just because if they're gonna do that with one person they'll likely do it with somebody else so their opinion at that point is is mute so what what should I think should be done about this? Like in my in my perfect world, in Carol world, I would think that people who leave book reviews are gonna read the book, right? They're gonna buy it, they're gonna read it, they're gonna form their own opinions about it, and they're gonna do it, you know, however long it takes them to do it. I think that one thing I would like to point out is just that book reviews do affect an author's career. If, for example, if suddenly my book gets a, a ton of one star reviews after this video, I'm likely not gonna be able to finish the series. Like that's just an honest fact. With that in mind, I, I don't want to discourage people from being honest. If they don't like the book, they don't like it, and they should be allowed to not like it and say why they didn't like it. There's nothing wrong with that. One thing I would definitely encourage is just to, when I say professional on this thing, I'm not talking about, like, you know, use proper verbiage and, you know, always touch on these factors kind of thing. What I'm talking about is that when you are leaving these book reviews to just be aware of how emotional you are when you're writing them and to avoid having any kind of, as I stated before, personal attack against the author because this actually discredits you because you're going to read, like, a hot mess when you leave this book review when, in fact, what you're trying to do is you might be trying to warn people tonight read it or anything like that but again if you come off as being irrational people are just going to dismiss the the review in general and then i'd also just encourage readers to be transparent if they're reading something and they normally don't read it or there's again like i mentioned earlier there's a kink in the book and you're not into that kink you know just just be up front and say hey this isn't my kink not my circus not my monkeys kind of thing and just leave your review with that following i mean it's going to be transparent if people read it anyway but if you have the the foresight to actually just leave that disclaimer people will be you know not saying that they'll read your review with a bit more grain of salt but they'll be a little bit more understanding that you're new to this it's not something that you usually like and so they'll be able to understand your point of view a little bit more now these are all thoughts by Caro. Uh, I definitely want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, again, opinions are like farts. Everybody's got them and some of them stink. You are more than welcome to tell me if my opinion stinks um, in regards to this matter. I know that there will be a decent group of people who will basically say that because I'm an author, I shouldn't be allowed to have a say on this topic. But as I've mentioned in this video before, reviews do affect my career. Um, and I just get really worried with the way that reviews are handled. Uh, case in point, the the mobs that went after Zenith and the Blood Air and again, Blood Air's not even out yet and it's got 300 reviews um, and all that wonderfulness. Now, uh, so I'd actually like to take a moment to share a little bit of the clip from the podcast with you guys. Um, and again, there's a link down below where we talk about a lot more things in detail. But this is this is Tamara's thoughts on the situation. She got her soapbox out and shared her thoughts on this. And she's been publishing for a lot longer than me. And I definitely respect her opinion and her voice on the matter. I'm going to just get on my soapbox really quickly. I really hate when people re make reviews of books that they haven't read. Mm -hmm. And they're just doing reviews based on what their favorite says. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is incredibly disingenuous. Um, you can dislike what you think is going to happen all you want, but I just feel like that is, I don't know. I just don't think that that's good practice. Gra I, and granted, I know that reviews are for readers. I absolutely 100% agree with that, but 
as a reader and an author, I just, I, I don't agree with that practice. And this book already has over 300 reviews and over 300 ratings, which makes me wonder how many of these people have actually read it. Oh, no, I, I guarantee you nowhere near that amount. Man, gotta leave it to Tamara. She she says things so well. I always, I mean, You guys gotta check out the podcast. I'm not just saying that for a self-promote thing. It's just, you know, it's these are definitely topics that we talk about and we want to share with other people. But having said that, thank you so much for watching and taking the time to come in here and listen to what I have to say. If you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I, again, am looking to have a conversation and raise awareness to some of the things that are going on with this. Um, if you make your own video, please let me know. I would definitely like to watch it and leave my comments and share, you know, just see what everybody's saying in general. I have to do the outro promos now. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a book out. It's called Queen of Swords and Silence. There's a link down to that below. You can check it out. Uh, or if you want to check out my writing style before you decide if you're going to take that dive, I have a newsletter where if you sign up for it, you get a free copy of a short story. You can read it, peruse it, decide if you like my style, see if I know what I'm talking about when it comes to writing nonsense. And if you don't want to be on the newsletter after that, you can easily unsubscribe. My feelings aren't going to be hurt. And I mean, not that I... I do check all the people who unsubscribe, but I understand. I respect your decision. Don't feel like I don't. Um, but that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I look, really look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. So until then, y'all have a good time.